you all for coming. Um, I just want to do a short introduction to Jessica before she begins. Um, Jessica was born in Bogota, Colombia, and she graduated with honors from the School of Fine Arts of the National University of Colombia in 2005. Um, she lives and works between Colombia and New York City, and her art practice focuses on architectural space as subject matter as well as a tool. She enjoys the process of transforming her small-scale drawings into large-scale space-altering mural installations. Her work has been showcased in group shows both locally and abroad in cities like Bogota, New York, Miami, Washington, La Paz, and Tijuana. So, Jessica, now I'll be curtain. <laughs> Okay, space. so thank you so much. I'm Jessica Angel, Angel. Uh, as you already know, I came from Colombia. I'm really honored to be here. I want to thank everybody. First, you for being here. Everyone who invited me, I feel so, so welcome in the city. I am enjoying it a lot. Um, it's really great to host this little talk with you in this special place. Um, I feel like I can play a little bit with it, and uh, we did a little sort of um, uh, playing with the, the tools that you guys have here, so uh, you're going to get to see a little bit of that experimentation that, as Kim said, it was kind of a short notice, uh, but I think it came out really well, so, so uh, you're invited after I finish speaking, going around and seeing these little experiments we did. Uh, so I'm going to talk to you about my work, sort of in a chronological way, uh, how I ended up doing the kind of work that I'm doing now. I want to tell you a little bit about the ideas behind my work and sort of how my mind works. Um, so uh, I've done a lot of work uh, as a painter, as a drawer, uh, pretty much using traditional media. I had a focus in school as a painter. So that's my background, even though I'm today at the Digital Arts Lab. Uh, but I want you to keep that in mind so you can sort of see the work through the painting, drawing, silk screen printing sort of eyes. So uh, this was the first installation that I did in 2008. Um, I was doing this show with 32 paintings as well, and then I had this little room, they told me you could play with it, and I decided to do this um, because the paintings um, are using codes sort of like the matrix cliche-ish image. I was kind of doing that, and um, I was using codes in order to talk a little bit about how information is um, sort of the core of the way we think. Um, I read uh, Michel Foucault a lot, the French... Um, philosopher and he speaks about how information in different times in history has been what builds the reality around us. So even the way we dream is affected by all this information. So I've taken uh, the sort of digital side because that is the, the time where I am now. So I want to be consequent, does that work? Um, I want to be uh, coherent with my time. So I, I started digging a little bit through the uh, digital world in terms of information. I was kind of digging that. So this first installation uh, was done at the space in Bogota, in Colombia. And every, every one of these characters you see, they might seem like little computers, old iPhones or something, but they actually are um, codes, uh, characters, letters, numbers, number eight, number five. And then what I did with this room was wrap it up in paper um, using this uh, old technique for wallpapering. So since this first one installation, I saw, I didn't really mean to do it, but I would use really basic elements to talk about digital uh, the digital world. So I used uh, silk screen prints. Each one of these numbers is a print about this size, uh, black and white. <coughs> and then we paste it um, onto the walls and ceilings and floors. And uh, this was also the first time I did a collaborative work. I invited a friend of mine from school who was doing um, uh, sound experiments and 
immersive experiments with, with sound, um, with texture and sound design, they call it. So um, I invited him to, to do a piece for this. So this also plays sound. It looks bluish, even though it's black and white, because I just hung a, a bulb, one of those light, black lights, you can see here. Very simple, very minimal, but it lit the room and it played that role of darkness and light. Um, I wanted to explore the idea of going inside the, the computer and that has been a constant throughout my work since this project. Um, I kind of wanted to play a little bit with the idea of the Big Bang, and that's actually something that I've read not long ago, <coughs> the Big Bang of information, and they're now creating all sorts of relationships between uh, information as a, the bits, you know, zeros and ones that are actually light, no light. There's no zero, there's no one. There's just light, no light, and combinations of all these flashes, and that's what creates the whole <laughs> sense out of everything. So, so it was the first time I went to, to this boom of information. It's called Inside the Computing Machine. Uh, then after doing that, uh, I moved to New York in 2009, and this was my second Insulation, I would say, but it's actually a mural. Mm. I did it in an artist in residency program that I found there uh, by the river. It was an amazing space. Um, it was uh, an old uh, factory that was, you know, 2008. There was a lot of um, real estate properties that were empty, so there was a lot of people doing projects for artists and taking these spaces and making them sort of live with art. So. I had this space for about four months. Um, during three months, I planned the piece, and then during one month, I painted the whole thing. It's 19 feet high. It is a little disordered here, distorted, but that's sort of the size. Uh, and again, I wanted to play with that idea of being able to dive into this computer world and sort of get to sight, see around, and find what's happening. But uh, clearly, I get you know the chance to imagine and make up whatever because there's certainly <laughs> nothing happening there besides light, no light, light, no light, light, no light. Uh, so it's it is a um, I would say um, um, an excuse for me just that topic to play around and imagine. So it has a lot of influence of the 1980s, you know. Um, Bit uh, representations, very like the illustration of the beginning of you know uh, the computer graphics, or even Rubik's cubes, or those games like uh, Tetris. So my mind was there. Um, I was born in 1980, so it was like part of the imag imagery that is in my head. Um, and that also has to do with what I was telling you before that how information creates who we are. Um, in that sense, I'm not very um, Freudian because I believe I am a, a bunch of information and I'm like a funnel that gets all sorts of things. I get to choose what I want, but I cannot deny the influence that I have. So we're kind of trapped a little bit there. Um, this is another view so you can have a sense of the scale of the work. Uh, this one was <coughs> painted and um, I was doing the black light, the, the black lines around to sort of clean up the, the image, and I just couldn't do it. It was very hard to make it clean as I wanted. So I came up with the idea of using electrical tape. I didn't have that much time. It's like, I'll do electrical tape, and it really worked very well. So that mistake, sort of cheating little trick that I used. Uh, was followed by pretty much what I'm doing now. It's a lot of tape, but <laughs> yeah. Um, and you know, mural works. I really enjoyed New York during those five or four years I lived there because there's a lot of um, organizations. 
this was with the Brooklyn Arts Council. There's so many open calls, so being an artist has a lot to do with being, you know, chasing that kind of stuff. So I did a lot of writing and sending things and doing it the professional sort of way, and it seems to work. So, so I did send a, a proposal for this wall, and I got a, I got it funded by them. And it had also to do with that how codification builds up the seed. And I called this one building codes when coders, computer coders, are in a way building. And each one of these codes, it's like a block that builds. So that was the idea behind it. Um, I also kind of wanted, wanted to play with uh, the skyline, sort of that perception that we have that is from, from, a, from a far point of view. <coughs> Mm. So this image uh, actually comes from, from seeing all the coding of images. They actually, this image, you just flip it and that's what you get when you have either an image or a text or all the code that's behind everything that we see through this, the computer screen. You pr probably have seen it pretty much looks like this but the other way around. So somehow I just flipped it and I saw a skyline. So I decided to go with it and came up with an image. Um, and here you can see as Teresa was reading about my bio or my statement, I do put a lot of attention to, into the process. Um, I think that it's what I enjoy the most and I also think that there is where all the, 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 the line of thought goes through when you have all the time in the world to sit there and paint and do, your, your mind is really being very active. There's a lot that you're thinking about and I think uh, either it is visible or not in the work or if it's literal or not, it's still there. You know, there's this sort of energy that, that goes. So, so I like showing processes a lot, and I enjoy them a lot. I think that's, there's a lot of value in them. So <coughs> that mural, I actually painted in my studio. It's interesting to know that otherwise you wouldn't have never guessed. It's um, a canvas. I stretched it. Obviously, I measured the wall. I measured everything and was sure about it and just stretch, stretch the wall, the canvas on the wall, and just worked in my studio. Uh, I had some people helping me as well. So this is the way I worked it. Um, I did a, a grid with thread, like a rope, in order to keep the, you know, the mesh there. I used stencils. That's how a little bit of a process for that. Mm -hmm. This is another transforming mural. I don't even know how to call it, if it's a mural or if it's an installation, it's a painting. This one is a painting. <coughs> I, I did it, um, can you see there? Um, I did this painting at the Cooper Union School of Arts, also as part of, of a residency program for teaching artists in the metro New York area. And I was at that time teaching uh, a private high school in New Jersey, but it's still, I still fit. So that was great. And um, this, this piece particularly is inspired uh, by the building where it is located. I don't know if you know the School of Arts in the Cooper Union building. Uh, in 2007, uh, they made this huge futuristic looking building. It was made by Tom Main is the name of the, of the architect and it's all um, Tom Main um, sort of pushes this wave of architecture that is um, based with computers like Saha Hadid. Okay. So it's a lot of computer based um, um, architecture and I really like that building actually when I moved to New York it, it struck me the most out of everything so it was great to, to be able to give it some, you know, uh, homage. So, um, yeah, this is painted. 
And it is, I, I was trying to find this, um, uh, this sort of connection between the building and going again into the micro world of computers. So there is a point where, where architecture and micro chips sort of meet. When, when you see a, a motherboard, what you see pretty much is how a, a city is planned. And I find these similarities, like patterns in a way. And then I start seeing patterns in other places, like between the large and the, and the small. For example, an obvious example is uh, the atom and the solar system. But there are a lot of other examples where you see that. And it's, it's incredible to think about these <laughs> patterns, because then you realize that everything is a whole. And there's nothing really different from nothing. And thinking about immersion, for example, which is why I'm invited here, I'm like, OK, I'm doing this work. But I'm not really thinking about, OK, let's make immersive work. And I think of the word, and I feel, OK, immersion. I'm already immersed. It's kind of redundant. I'm immersed in myself. Each one of us is immersed in itself. And then we're all immersed here. And there's all sorts of layers of immersion. So. I like the idea of immersion in books, for example. As I was telling you, Michel Foucault, mm. we connect the idea of, of the virtual, for example. It's very old. It comes from way before. So, so it's nice to think about it. I don't know. So I'm trying to, to play a little bit with that um, um, parallel between what could be really small, what could be really large. <coughs> it's a really nice building. If you get the chance to go, I would recommend that. Um, and again, a little bit about the process. I enjoy it a lot. I draw a lot. I, pretty much everything comes from drawings and doodles. I always carry my sketchbook with me. And everything just sort of translates into a drawing or a bunch of drawings. And then I go through a, discerning, is that a word, discerning process, where I choose what I like the most. So these are some drawings that have been sort of a guide. And then I'm showing here how, how I do scale models for, for these works. Now that they're coming, becoming recurrent, <laughs> I have to sort of come up with a method. So I'm doing scale models every time I'm invited. So for 516 Arts, the piece that you will see, it's a large scale of work. Um, I did a model for it, and I, I needed all the, you know, the measurements, and I was very clear about what I was doing, and I had the chance to do a little prototype. So uh, scale models are now in the scene with me. Um, I also wanted to show this because this is part of a project that I did that I never got to, to realize. Uh, it was an open call also in Brooklyn uh, for the Brick Media Arts Center. And it was $30,000. I, I hadn't really done something that big, but I still went for it. Like, yeah, I can do this. So I did it, and it was great. I got pre-selected. They selected four projects. They gave each project $1,000 to develop the idea, then make a presentation, and then they chose two. And then I didn't get chosen. But I got all this work done. So for students, I really, really encourage you to go for open calls and making projects. And even, even if you don't get them, I think it's, it's great to, to do the effort of putting all this stuff together and having to write and doing all that. So this was this project that actually led me to do what is in 516 Arts in a way. So I have an image here of this maquette so with my background in painting. And um, this other image is this maquette with, made into a prototype. So the project was to create this large scale murals that take over the walls and take over the floor and create collaborations with artists from other disciplines mostly um, video artists. Uh, there's this technique that you can see back here. It's called video mapping. And it's pretty much a video that can be manipulated, that you can stretch, 
or you can make it fit exactly where you want. So uh, we'll play it in a second, but you'll see it later. So this image is actually this one. So I got to do it in a very small way. Um, so for this project, I invited uh, Rui Pereira. He's from, he's from uh, Lisbon. And uh, he's, a, he's an interactive media artist. And I said, I want to do this digital project, but all I can do is paint. And I don't have the means or the, you know, all the information of the cabling and the Kinect camera. There's a lot. I've actually learned a lot from other artists. Uh, but it's not my, it's not my, my major thing. So we did a little video of the maquette of the scale model as if it was actually done to, for this presentation. I also invited uh, the same sound designer who did the first one, the blue one I showed you. Uh, I've been working with him, he's really good. His name is Gilberto Castillo, he's Colombian as well. So, so Rui Pereira created the mapping, I created the imagery, and Gilberto Castillo created this ambient sound as if it was playing you know, in a, in a large place like this one. So this is just a project that, that I never got to, to do. But I'm showing it today, actually, because, how can I pause it? There? I'm sorry. I want to talk before showing that. <coughs> it's this one. So, um, so I'm really into, really open to invite people. I like people, and I think I'm not going to do anything by myself, to be honest. And the more I connect, the the better, you know, for me and for everybody. And we're like bigger all together. I kind of feel that way. So, so I'm trying to reach out to people from different disciplines. There's another another uh, project I'll show you later. But um, for this project at 516 Arts, um, it's, you probably know this space. So I took over the whole wall when you enter, and the front mezzanine and the floor. So it's pretty large. And, but it's also very inviting in terms of it's, there's a lot of white, and it's like the perspective sort of makes you walk into it. And, um, but it's also empty in, a w in the way that uh, this space is just hard edge there, and we are the ones who who make it happen. If it's empty, there's not really much happening. So it has to have people in it, and there's going to be action in there. So that's why sometimes I try to fill the space with sound. So so it's not like that. Um, so I talked to uh, Suzanne. I came up with the idea actually talking to one of the other artists who's showing looking at the work, the process, and the thing. And uh, he was saying, why don't you do some, some video mapping over this? I was like, well, I don't have enough time. You know, it's too much work. I don't, I don't manage the tools so well. So, so we came up with the idea of creating an open call now that there's so much um, connections you know, here that I see. There's a lot of collaborative work, and I think that's great, between current, Santa Fe, uh, Albuquerque, 516 Arts, Arts Lab, and I love that. And it seems like this two months, there's a lot happening that takes over a broad area. So, so we're actually uh, making an open call for artists, digital artists, to take over my work. I'm like, you do whatever with video. So it's, I'll, I'll let you know, we're actually, we came up with this idea a day ago or so, but I asked around and, uh, I got a yes, green light, so we're going to go with, for it. 
so I want to show you this little video because this is sort of the stuff that I think I'm looking for. So this is also made by uh, Rui Pereira when I invited him to be part. So it's right here. So what's happening here, uh, playing with Kinect cameras, playing with uh, interaction. So the whole idea is that if you, if you touch the wall, then something happens. If you walk by, if you're close, if you're far, you know, playing with, with interaction. And I know there's a lot of in interactive uh, endeavors happening here, so I think it'd be great to, you know, to, to collaborate. I really want to collaborate. So if anybody has any ideas with me, I'm in. <laughs> you know? This is uh, another interactive artist. He was developing these particles. Uh, so it's also with Kinect camera to cameras. If you w walk close or if you walk far away, there are different uh, reactions of the video. Um, so, so it's nice. It's nice to play with this element. So hopefully we get some entries, some people interested in participating. Um, I think, uh, we have a deadline so far for June 23rd, so I'll, I'll let you know through through the arts lab. And oh well, that was it. That was that project. Um, I have this other one, um, collaboration. This is about the size as the 116 Arts project. This is also inspired by um, the sort of 1960s futuristic uh, architecture, like Arti Archigram, Peter Cook, that kind of stuff I find very interesting. And I really like how these guys make projects like if they were going to be made. So they have all the plans, they have all the research, they have all the, you know, if you actually wanted to make this project, you could. All the material is there even though it's completely fantastic and nobody really wants to do that. But um, I've, studied, I've studied Archigram, and so this is a little bit inspired in Archigram. And uh, I did the mural, and I invited uh, a video mapper from Colombia to play with it, to sort of fill it up with color, and we also invited a, a musician from Colombia to play. It became a little bit of a party thing. It was fun. Uh, this is this is actually the piece called it's called hemispherical immersion, and um, it's actually the work that Five Sixteen Arts wanted me to do here. But uh, this kind of work <coughs> responds to specifically to the to the architectural space where where it, you know where it belongs or where it's made for. So this is made for, for a specific place. It's a gallery in Colombia and I did my model, my scale, my scale model. Da, da, da. So it was really hard for me when I got this invitation. I said, well, this is meant to be for a space that has this size and that size. And I might not feel like repeating myself again. You know, I want to be motivated. I want, you know. So, so I said, is it okay if I come up with a second sort of version of it? So what you will be seeing is hemispherical immersion in black and white. That's sort of the, the name that I was thinking for it. So what I like to, to play with in, in this piece, I did a lot of, of reading for this too. Um, I was reading about um, sort of juxtapositions between also lines of thought and uh, the reticle, reticle, the, the pixels, the reticle that is Square sort of simulates or talks about a certain way of thought that is very kind of like s the state, you would say, in a way. It's like what has to be there, and this is the proper thing to do. And um, there is the, uh, the perspective, the curved perspective, uh, you know, the Euc Euclidean perspective and the non Euclidean. So, Euclidean perspective is actually the one that, that is in the background. That they teach us a school Euclidean perspective where they tell us uh, two parallel lines will never meet. And it happens to, to be wrong because everything is curved. 
and this immersive fluid where we are has no straight lines at all. So, so that is that it has a little bit to do with the sort of the status quo a little bit. Um, and then playing with the, the a Euclidean perspective against the the status quo is sort of like uh, the the vanishing points actually. Uh, Michel, no, Gilles Deleuze, he's also in the line of Michel Foucault and all these French philosophers. Uh, he has a term, it's actually called uh, the vanishing point. And it has to do with the resistance and it has to do with you know, building new ways of thought. And new, new he says the, the new um, roads, sort of like mental highways. It's kind of like you have to open up the, the path you know, mental paths. So that's interesting too. But I was kind of thinking about that. To, to play against this juxtaposition between what is rigid and formal and then what is kind of fluid. And also with the idea of the color and the black and white juxtaposing. I like juxtapositions. And I like, a, uh, how do you call them? Um, analogies. <coughs> These are two other uh, points for perspective. This kind of work has mainly one point of view. When you move around, the shapes might kind of lose its, um, I don't know. They're, they might not be that recognizable because it works from one perspective, like anamorphisms. You know those? Mm. This is the, my last solo project, 2013-2014. It was up for three months in New York uh, at the AC Institute. And since I had such a long period of time for this show, I, I explored again the idea of collaborations. Because I said, OK, I'm doing this work, and then it's going to be up for three months. It's going to be pretty boring for people to walk in and out for three months and see the same. Let's be honest. Let's just activate this. So um, I invited five different people to play here with this. Um, one of them was uh, an astrophysicist. This work is called As Above, So Below. And it kind of plays with that idea I was telling you before of the patterns. So the, the higher, the higher, the higher you go, the more you will realize that you're below there. That kind of cycle that Frederick Nietzsche, Nietzsche talks about that I like a lot, it's called the uh, eternal return. So um, th it comes from that idea. And it also comes from this research that is pretty new that has to do with, I was telling you before, the, the megabytes uh, as the source. This is a little crazy. It says that megabytes are the means of matter, like even even if you go further into string theory and the smaller, the smaller particles, the, the smallest particles, there is just one or zero, or light or no light, or, or strength forces. One pulls, one doesn't pull. And that's the same. One, zero pulls, not doesn't pull, light, no light. So it's, like, it's this sort of relationship with forces. So, uh, so I thought that was very interesting. And, and these guys have this new theory, and they even call it the informan, you know. So I kind of wanted to make a parallel between these sort of computer-based elements to the universe, to a black hole, you know, make these connections. Maybe I'm the only one who sees them, but I get to be here and tell you, so that's good. <laughs> um, so these astrophysicists came, she came into the space, and it was talked just like this one. It was, and it was great. People were thinking about infinity, and they're in, inside an art installation. Uh, I invited again Gilberto Castillo. He did an amazing piece with sounds above, vibrates below, and all this sort of uh, relationship between what is high in sound and what, it, and what is low. Um, a performance artist did an incredible piece in there with snow. Uh, sound, uh, musicians, two musicians played inside, so it was great. Uh, and that's why I, since we have a three months long show at 516 Arts, I think improvisingly <laughs> enough, <laughs> I don't know, we could, we could come up with something. 
and, and do this open call for, for artists to take over the space and, and do something and activate it, activate the, the installation. Um, there's, these are other views of how with the lines I attempt to erase the space. <clears throat> I don't know if you read the abstract of this talk. I was saying I'm interested in, in the space, and again, I'm here juxtaposing things, um, in the space as a, uh, as a rigid form, because it, it is rigid in terms of architecturally speaking, it's very rigid, but then there's this other space, for example, our thoughts, they have a space. There has got to be a space there, right? We don't know exactly how, what kind of space is, and I think it is related to the same space that is where all the ideas in this computer are. It is related. Mm. So I feel the, the, the hard space, the, the, the stiff space, which is the wall, mm, holds within uh, the dynamic space. And we are f dynamically filling this space right now with this talk. And um, our ideas and everything that could happen. And when you see spaces and all the history that's been through an old building, for example, it's all that flow that's been in there. I think that's very interesting. But I think that they're not that far apart in, in a sense. Uh, there's um, Douglas Hofstadter. Do, does anybody know him? Uh, he's really amazing how he speaks about the self and about the space within our brains. And he, his theory says that we project ourselves into the outside and he says that the outs outside, even the universe, which seems that far away, is actually in our brains. It's like there's, no, there's nothing out there. <laughs> it's just here, <laughs> you know? And it's interesting. It's interesting to see, to think about these levels and, and layers, you know? So, so with, with erasing the space, the hard space, the, the solid space, I kind of want to extend that and erase it with the drawing, you know? Playing with that. And this is a, the other vision from the, the, the image is a little attractive. It's actually longer. But um, this is how it looks from the center. I also did a couple of blocks and three dimensional elements that I think I need to explore more. This is all the way out. And um, I think that's next will be Albuquerque, <laughs> but it's not there yet. So if you have any questions, I'm, I would be really happy to answer them. <coughs> or if you have any comments about these ideas, or I don't know. <laughs> um, this piece behind us, well, if you saw the project, Maybe we could walk, I think we could talk a little bit, since this is a bit bigger than I thought, but um, you could play it. I think it's interesting. So what's happening here, we have a mural. It's, uh, it's actually a banner, one of those banners for advertising, whatever. And um, this banner has a black and white print, which is the image that and then I created the video that matches the, uh, the mural. And what I find really interesting and um, effective about video mapping, in the sense I want to use it, uh, is that black in the video is really black because it's a printed black. If it was just a, a projection, it would be a little washed out. And as I'm telling you, I come from a painting and drawing background so I look at that for me it's like it's really important to have a black that is black and a yellow that is yellow so that is the reason pretty much why I'm using uh, the video mapping with the mural and it's not just a projection I think the mural you you can see it it's a black and it's really striking to the eye so for me the video mapping is just a tool of adding color and adding light and movement just as if it was, uh, you know, a water watercolor or oil paint. And it has the, you know, the thing that it can move. That's cool. 
that's pretty much it. It's very simple, I just use it as a tool. And, but it also has to do with how, what I was saying before, what is static and what is, and what is uh, flowing. So this sort of space provides the static form and the video brings in the, the flow in it. So that, what I was talking about, the, the hard, hard edge space, the architecture and what happens in it. So it has to do with that. This is a sound design piece by Gilberto Castillo as well. So, so he, he responds very well to my ideas. So he came up with the sound that would take you a little bit to that digital world. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, back here we have a, we have a, several videos I was telling you about the processes and how processes mean so much to me. And even if you see it through the sort of critical perspective from our art history or Jack, Jack Burnham, you know him, Jack Burnham? Um, he, in the 60s, he wrote this uh, really interesting article. It went on uh, art forum at the time and he was um, talking about processes as being uh, the form of art that mattered the most. And at that time, at this, in the 60s, well, we see fluxes and all these movements uh, that give most attention uh, to processes. And actually, uh, the objectivity of art becomes uh, something that was pretty much, the, uh, how do you say, despised, you know? And that's why painting went through such terrible <laughs> Uh, crisis. System aesthetics. Huh? System aesthetics. System aesthetics, yes, exactly. It's really, really interesting. <coughs> and um, so, so, yeah, system aesthetics. Um, well, okay, this is a project that I did in 2009 in collaboration with another artist friend. And what we did was pretty much curating um, a collaboration between painters in this museum. So we got a grant. And we got to, to invite people just to take over the space and play around with their, you know, their, their paintings. And it was a painting-based project, uh, site-specific. It was interesting. It doesn't have that much to do with my own work because it was a, a, somebody else's work in a way. But we curated that. So. But you will see here all these time-lapse videos that that I have uh, done sort of to, to keep a memory of this process because after the work is, is finished, the exhibition is done, it's just, you know, it's ephemeral. So I think uh, recording the process is just the only way for me to keep the work, you know. So uh, this is the Cooper Union one that was completely painted. Mm. It's just a lot of work that goes into this kind of intervention. So um, I'm, I'm starting to gather people, um, assistants and um, <coughs> volunteers. And for this project, I got people helping me from the school. Uh, but then I offered it in a way as a, as a, like a, as a workshop. So it's really nice because I, I learn a lot from from them too, and then I have to, to put myself in the workshop position, so I bring in books and then I, I show them what, what you know, nourishes my practice, and so, so it becomes very, very active and rich and, and fun. So th most of these are uh, Cooper Union students who, who can to work with me. Um, and the whole idea of playing with the senses, you know, uh, more than playing with the, there's a lot of ideas that I like, but I don't attempt to, to get the viewer or, you know, the audience or whoever sees my work to, to go to understand them in any way, or I don't attempt the work to mean anything. <coughs> you know, I want to leave it open for interpretation and open for uh, associations. Because I was telling you before, there's 
we all are have our little funnel and we choose what we want and those uh, um, those things we choose are related to our experiences where we come from uh, and and that I don't know when you see my work what is the association you will make I have no idea what your life was so it's just open for everyone to associate with their own mm. this is how I made a the scale model for as above, so below. So, I have a lot of fun doing this, honestly. I see myself there and it's like, this is a good life. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, it's amazing. It's nice, it's cool to be an artist. It's tough, but it's very, um, it's very, uh, oh, I don't know, gratifying. So this is, this is pretty much the process we're going through now, doing the floor at the gallery today. We were, that's a piece of vinyl. And it just comes in rolls and we just cut it, hand cut it, everything. Because this vinyl is generally used to, to do with plot, plotter machines. You know, it's just a file and you get it done. And some people think that it was done that way. But I want to... Uh, you know, let people know that it's not. Is the same material they use for cars? Um, it is similar. The ones, the one for cars has, you know, different composition a little bit, and it's more tacky and it's more durable. But it is, it is pretty much the same. It's plastic. So. And there, there's just so much detail that goes. You don't have to see the whole thing. <laughs> we'll let it run. Uh, there's also a little experiment we did uh, with David. And it was great that even though I have all this work <laughs> happening at the gallery, I have the energy. Thank you, <laughs> God, youth. Uh, seriously, I won't think I won't be able to do this all my life. Uh, but now that I have the energy, yes. And um, so they're like, do you want to play around with the, the, the games, you know, the games, the toys we have pretty much, which is a dome. And I always wanted to do something with a dome, but I never had the opportunity. So the dome is back there and you're welcome to come see what, what we did. And it's a very simple experiment. We took one of the works, uh, the very first one I showed you, blue and white, and um, we just projected it and we're playing the sound that you didn't hear when you saw it on the photograph. But it's nice, it's nice to play around and I hope I get to play around here a little more even after I leave, <laughs> all right? I'll just email and send projects and come up with ideas and probably drag someone down to the planetarium actually in Colombia. I know I have friends there. And yeah, like, I'm in Albuquerque, what is this? I love it. And I hope you could go to Bogota and we could make projects together and then go somewhere else. I think that's amazing. And my work doesn't really um, talk that much about Latin America, for example. I'm not that interested in how local or not local. I am more interested in the global part of, you know, the whole net of knowledge that's out there. I don't want to kind of put myself in that box, you know? This is another one with the paper. So does anybody have another question, comment, um, joke? <laughs> no? Yes, absolutely. Please come see uh, the dome and listen to the, to the sound design piece. It's really amazing. It, it is about three minutes long, but it has this cadencia that is very interesting. Cadencia? Cadence. 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 So, so just, you could go, you could sit, there's this chair, so you could relax a little there and pay attention to the sound because it's really beautiful. Mm -hmm. so Jessica, do you want to... Well, maybe we should thank Jessica yeah. for watching. No, thank you.